Hello there everyone. Today we're going to do this. This is um, a, a slightly or a, quite a lot cheaper version of the very famous Danish fly that's called uh, that's called Pattegrisen or pink picklet. So this is uh, this is an alternative version using less uh, expensive materials. Um, it's a really kind of like the arch type of uh, of a shrimp pattern, um, and really really a nice fly that fishes very well. Um, okay, so here goes. The first thing we need is is of course a hook, and here we're going to use the Arix Light Stinger in a size four, a size six and size eight would do nicely as well. Um, but the size four is is easier to to show how how we do this uh, in in the video. And um, besides that, we're going to use some teal, some marabou, some dubbing, and and a hackle. So it's not it's not that expensive of a fly. It's not that difficult. It's it's a fairly fairly nice pattern, and it works very very well for for sea trout. And I'm guessing for all other types of uh, of fish that that feeds on shrimp as well. And of course, the thing with this pattern is, if you want, you can easily change the uh, the colors and stuff like that to fit to to match the hatch of uh, uh, not hatch, but you know, to match the the shrimps in in your local region. So basically, um, the first thing I'm gonna do is is add some tying thread here. If you think the video is a bit opaque, it's because this salmon salmon color is really really gonna stand out in a second. So so I have to maybe I can I can adjust it a bit as we progress. Along the video here. So first, I'm gonna add some tying thread to the shank. Then I'm gonna take a teal feather, and I've cut out the the middle section because when I when I make two loose turns on top of this, I can pull it back, and then I have very very easily and and nice looking tail uh, that adds some contrast, and that's gonna be uh, be the mouth parts of of this fly. So there we have the tail. Then I'm going to add some non-lead wire, because in Denmark we're not allowed to use uh, lead in flies. But if you have a lead wire, then uh, you feel free to use that. Um, to give this a, slight, a bit amount of, of weight. It's a fairly sloppy imitation, you could say. We are not going to add uh, a carrot paste and stuff like that. But, but it's, it's, it's still a, a decent imitation, and, and this has fooled countless, countless fish. So... The next thing we're gonna grab is some marabou, in uh, in in salmon pink, or sometimes it's called perch, or sometimes it's called coral and stuff like that. It's it's basically kind of the same color, but this is uh, this is to substitute the uh, this the, the more expensive um, spay hackles, and uh, and I must say I really really like the spay hackles and I use those a lot for my for my shrimps. But uh, but this is if you want an an alternative to to those, then this is uh, probably your best bet. Um, so I'm taking the marabou here, and basically what I try to do is is I try to place this so it's it's gonna come around the hook bend here. And it's gonna be looking kind of like a hackle, so it's not gonna be too long, a bit longer than the hook shank, but but not not a lot longer than that is 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 not uh, is not optimal. I'm gonna cut off all this left over here, and I I'm not completely satisfied with the amount here, so I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a little more. I'm gonna take a little more of this uh, this marabou here. I'm just gonna locate a feather. There was one. I could use. You see, I pull the marabou out like this, and then I take my fingers. If you have a mark pedishang or or something a material clip, then you can you can easily use that as well. I just use my fingers here because, well, that's something I've just gotten used to doing. So now I have my marabou in between my two fingers, and then it's easily to stack up and give me a nice bundle. And this bundle is actually, I think, a bit too big. Because we have some on there already. If if this had been the first part, then it would probably have been perfect for for basically just that alone. But since I have something on there already, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a bit less. Uh, I about half did I think. Add this. Throw on some tying thread. And applied a bit of saliva in order to <laughs> keep.
keep it in check. Well, that's something like that is perfect. Cut off everything of that. Then I'm going to take a small amount of dubbing and for this we're going to use the SLF salt water in shell pink. Fluoroshell shell pink actually. I don't think there is a shell pink that is not fluorescent but and just a small amount we just want to make a small bundle uh, down here where the tail is uh, for the eye to be uh, to to make the eyes eye stand a bit out. And for this I'm going to use the black uh, the black easy strip eyes. It's it's eyes that's on a stalk here, so very easy to to apply and uh, to attach. And they uh, they look uh, very very nice on on the shrimps here. And also they're easy to use and uh, and and very durable and very strong. As you can see now, the eyes are in the right location. And then I'm going to cut the rest of the stalk off here. We don't need that anymore. Then I need some uh, some rib. And I'm going to take some 0 0.20, something like that. I'm going to tie this here on the side of this. Like that. Just going to put this off to the side. And uh, the next thing we need is, is a hackle feather. And, uh, and here I'm going to use a rooster. From this gorgeous, gorgeous. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> All this marabou gets in your nose. From this, uh, this, uh, this is a Whiting 4B a rooster cape. Nice cape. And we need to tie this in in the in the bottom of the feather. So I'm just gonna st start by stripping off all the down, downy part here, as you can see. And then um, I have to tie this. With the uh, with the upside facing towards me, in order for for when I turn this, this will be correct. But I don't want too much hackle, so basically I pull off all the feather uh, fibers on one side here. So basically, when you look at the feather at the front of the feather, you will have the the front of the feather f uh, facing you towards you. And then, then you want the right side of the feather to be uh, to be gone. I'm gonna tie this at the same place where I tied the rib. I'm gonna tie this a bit up along the shank here to give the body a bit more density. Cut that off, and then I'm gonna turn the rib over to make sure it stays in place. Cut that off. Perfection. And we're going to take some dubbing. And the first dubbing here I'm going to add is, is, is uh, I want this to be thicker here and then gradually be thinner and thinner as we move up along the uh, the hook shank here. So basically, I, I, in order to ensure that my eyes are in the right position, I'm just going to tie some dubbing between the eyes here. Fold that back, and then I'm gonna start making the. Ah, oh, damn it! I I I accidentally uh, got my feather and my rib to be in the wrong place because I wasn't paying attention. So of course, when I tie between the eyes, I need to hold my 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 hackle and my and, and my rib off to the side. I got it there. Okay. Better. Perfect. And then I'm going to add some more dubbing. And you want the the most amount of dubbing you want to watch the uh, the eyes so so that this tapers right so it has the right uh, uh, the right look in in the water. So we use the most amount of dubbing up here. And then gradually we use less and less dubbing as we as we continue up towards the eyes. What I found when fishing for sea trout with uh, with flies of this type is is one of the things that really makes this fly fish a lot better than a lot of other stuff is if you if you fish this very very actively, um, and I fish this a lot with uh, with my rod underneath my uh, underneath my arm 
and then a two-handed retrieve and then just basically all out I pull this as fast as I can um, and then with a lot of with a lot of very short short stops uh, in between the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 retrieving of of the fly so basically just do 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 hammer away then stop do 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 hammer away then stop do 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 hammer away then stop and it's very often in these stops that the 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 fish actually grabs this fly so i fish this basically kind of like i would fish a small bait fish or or a sand eel or a pattern or something like that um because it 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 has this bright bright um, and also because it has this uh, fairly bright pink um appearance it's it's very easily easy to spot out in the waves and this makes it it easy for you to see if you actually have fish chasing your fly so so very often uh, on the on the coast uh, you can you can you can see the sam the sea trout uh, um, following your fly and and if you can see that you can you can change you can actually change what you're doing change it up and and this will this will lead to increased number of, of fish caught because you can you can you can swap the pace of the fly you can make the the stubs long and stuff like that and it really really comes in handy when 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 you want to persuade persuade a uh, sea trout to grabbing the fly as you can see the first turn of the hackle here I turned it behind the eye actually behind one of the eyes in order to uh, to give it a bit more bulk in the the back end of, uh, of this and I turn this as evenly as I can all the way up here and as you can see there's fairly a fairly decent amount of uh, of hackle on this fly so so if i hadn't taken off half of the uh, feather here this would have been it would it would simply have been it would have been too much like this and i take my rib here and of course i turn this uh, in in not in the same uh, way that i turned the uh, the hackle because i want my rib here to to ensure the fly uh, and, and to improve the durability of the fly to make the fly stronger there we go and I'm gonna make a whip finish of course use some some sabre gap on the on the head here or some some varnish whatever you, you want I like sabre gap a lot for, for, for flies like this And then what we need to do is is to pull out some of the dubbing here. This actually was better than uh, this fly looks better than the one I did in Danish. So <laughs> uh, practice makes better, I guess. <laughs> it's actually been a, quite a while since I've tied uh, shrimp patterns uh, because I've been fishing a lot for uh, fishing a lot with foam beetles uh, during the summer and and a lot of uh, a lot of salmon as well. So and you know. Uh, so so it's it's good practice. I'm gonna be using this soon again. Winter is coming and uh, and winter is sea trout fishing in Denmark at least. So basically, pull out a lot of the dubbing here to give it more a more translucent look, to give it a more natural natural yeah trans translucent and transparent look. Because if you look at a shrimp in the water or most bait fish bait mo most most baits uh, that fish eat, they want to to hide themselves and to camouflage flash. Camouflage, camouflage. I don't know if that's pronounced correctly. They they want to hide themselves as much as possible, and of course, if uh, that's that's very very why you very often see uh, see all these uh, bait fish and stuff like that are are very transparent and glass like in in their appearance, and and that, that's basically because, well. <laughs> It's easier for them to hide if if they're they they are sea fruish. I don't know if that's a word either, but you know I said it at least. Um, oh, basically, use your use your dubbing brush to to comb the fly into into the desired streamlined look, and there you have it. A very nice easy shrimp pattern that as I said you can you can do this in any color uh, if you wanted it in tan or olive or, or whatever it's it's gonna work great as well it's fairly simple and you know it's it's basically just some marabou some hackles well, <laughs> well come to think of it basically basically this is a glorified <laughs> glorified woolly bucker with shrimp eyes
<laughs> Maybe I should dub in that instead. The glorified woolly bugger with shrimp, shrimp eyes. But you know, you, you gotta love the woolly bugger anyway. So, yeah. Um, this is called the, uh, the, the, the poor man's piglet. Um, uh, because we don't use spay, we use something that is uh, that is less expensive. But it's still a killer, killer pattern, and the color here is deadly, deadly for trout. Trust me. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this will be very, very. If you remove the eyes, then this is probably a pretty, pretty cool salmon pink uh, woolly bugger for for trouts anywhere. Also, <laughs> I never thought thought of it as that. Uh, just a just a salmon pink woolly bugger. But I really see that that is. Very similar to a uh, to a uh, salmon pink woolly bugger with shrimp eyes. Oh well, thank you for watching. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video and find it at least moderately useful. Um, as always, if you haven't done so, then please please subscribe to my channel um, and and swing by my web shop. It's called Nordic Anglers. You can find the entire material list for this pattern and many many other patterns of the flies that you see here on my YouTube uh, available there. So basically, with a few clicks, you can you can buy all the materials for all the different flies and uh, and uh, see loads more videos and and stuff like that. So uh, thank you for for watching and uh, yeah, take care out there.